Here's an example of a redox reaction where zinc solid reacts with copper 2 plus. The zinc is oxidized into zinc 2 plus and the copper is re reduced into copper solid. What I've drawn below is, is maybe what we could call a mechanism for this reaction. In this mechanism, I'm showing that a solid chunk of zinc is getting dropped into a solution of copper 2 plus. So the copper 2 plus the copper 2 plus ions are diffusing around in solution and then they could bump into the surface. Once they bump into the surface, two electrons could get transferred that is going to reduce the copper 2 plus to copper 0, making it a metallic form and oxidize the zinc 2 plus. The zinc 2 plus is soluble in the solution and does not stay uh, part of the electrode and then uh, dissolves out into solution whereas the copper zero we've formed uh, plates to the surface. So in this mechanism, the zinc and the copper are in physical contact with one another, and we cannot harvest the energy associated with the two electrons right here that get transferred. So what I'm about to show you is a galvanic cell where we separate these two half reactions into two different compartments, and we force the electrons to travel between an external circuit to, in order to travel from the oxidation to the reduction reaction. When the electrons travel through an external circuit, that allows us to extract power from the reaction, so we essentially make a battery. To construct our galvanic cell, we're going to start with two beakers, one that contains a 1 molar zinc 2 plus salt solution, the other that contains a, copper, uh, a 1 molar copper 2 plus salt solution. I'm only going to write the zinc 2 plus and the copper 2 plus. The, the counter ions um, don't really matter for the, por for the purpose of this illustration. Next, I'm going to put actual wire electrodes or bars of zinc and bars of copper into the respective solutions. So here we have a actual zinc solid bar, and here we have an actual copper solid bar. I'm going to connect those with a wire to allow for the flow of electrons. In this galvanic cell, we're going to observe the exact same net redox reaction that we did before, but the two half reactions are going to occur in the separate beakers. So first let's look at the zinc electrode side. Here zinc solid will be transformed into zinc 2 plus. So I'm going to draw a little arrow showing that zinc is going to be formed. If zinc 2 plus is formed, that means that electrons need to leave this electrode and travel to the other electrode. At the other electrode we see that the electrons are going to enter the system and that copper 2 plus from the solution will become plated onto the surface. If we allowed this reaction to continue as drawn, we'd accumulate a bunch of positive charges on the zinc side and a bunch of negative charges on the copper side. And we know that that's very unlikely that we can allow that to happen, so we have to figure out some way to balance the charge. The way we do that is by adding a salt bridge. I'm going to draw that now, actually. Let me change the color. We have to add a salt bridge. We'll make it red. A salt bridge is something as simple as a paper towel that's been soaked in salt water. All it does is it allows the charge to balance on the uh, on on both sides of the the redox reaction. 
So electrons are flowing into the copper side. So what that means is in the salt bridge, cations, and let's, let's pretend we soaked it in potassium chloride. Potassium ions would flow that way. Looking at the zinc side, we're losing electrons. So we're losing negative charges. So in the salt bridge, again, we soaked it in potassium chloride. Chloride ions would flow in the opposite direction. So you'd expect chloride ions to enter the uh, zinc side of the, of the reaction and potassium ions to enter the copper side of the reaction. Again, this is the salt bridge. It allows the charge to balance overall so that we don't accumulate a lot of positive charges and negative charges on either side of the galvanic cell. We can also identify which electrode is the cathode and which is the anode. So the electrodes are the bars of copper or the bars of zinc. So a cathode is the electrode that is emitting electrons into the solution. So here on the copper side, the copper electrode is emitting electrons into the solution to reduce the copper 2 plus. So that means that the copper electrode is the cathode and it is positively charged. That means that the zinc is the anode and it is negatively charged. So what we'd expect to see over an extended period of time is on the zinc side of the galvanic cell, the zinc electrode is slowly losing zinc metal atoms and they're forming zinc 2 plus. So this electrode would get etched away and I'm going to draw it like it just got kind of skinny and etched somehow. So that material would be removed from the zinc electrode and it's now turned into a higher concentration of zinc 2 plus in solution. At the same time, copper 2 plus on the, on the cathode side is getting reduced and forming copper metal. And so what we would observe is that the copper 2 plus electrode would actually be accumulating copper and growing. We can write out the two half reactions that are occurring in the system, just to clarify. So the oxidation reaction is occurring over here. So the zinc and I'm going to write zero just to remind us that the oxidation state is zero for that metal, it is getting oxidized to zinc 2 plus, which is producing two electrons. Those electrons then go through the external circuit to the other side where the reduction reaction is happening, the reduction half reaction, the copper 2 plus plus the two electrons is transformed into copper solid, and I'll put the little zero oxidation state just to remind us. That's solid metallic copper. So here are the two half reactions that are happening in the, in the separate compartments. The value of separating these two half reactions is that we force the electrons to go through the external circuit. That means that we could put a little light bulb right here in the circuit, and when we connect everything, the electrons flow and the light bulb emits light. So we can transform the, the potential energy or the delta G for this particular reaction into useful work in the form of the flow of electrons through an external circuit. It's essentially a battery. So how do we connect the concept of the galvanic cells we just learned about in the two beakers with batteries that we're used to looking at? So let's, let's talk about how to construct an actual battery. This is a very simplified version of, of what a battery would look like inside, um, but I think it's helpful in terms of connecting it to the morphology of the galvanic cell that we just learned about. So here's a, a sheet of zinc metal, uh, or maybe zinc mesh or something like that. So kind of screen material, but it's made out of zinc. The next layer of the battery would be a layer of maybe kind of felt fabric that has been soaked in salt solution. This is going to be our salt bridge. 
Okay, the next layer of the battery would be a sheet of copper, and that's either solid copper or, again, copper mesh or something like that. We would connect a wire from the copper sheet or, um, or mesh and a wire from the zinc uh, sheet or mesh. Then we would take these three layers and roll them into a cylinder. This cylinder would have a wire that came out the top connected to the copper sheet that would provide our, our cathode or the positive end of the battery and then a wire that came out the bottom that would be the negative, the anode part of the battery. We could then slide that uh, rolled up cylinder uh, or bundle inside an empty cylinder with the casings of uh, or the external casing of a battery and we'd have a battery. So again, this is a very simplified version of how a battery works, but I think it's helpful uh, for connecting it back to the, the shape of the galvanic cell in terms of the two beakers and then the shape of modern batteries that you're used to interacting with.